Yeah, God, it's just good. It is good to be in your presence. And we're grateful for your presence everywhere, Lord. Those of us who are here gathered, those of us who are watching, we're grateful that you meet us everywhere, in our living rooms, in our seats, but that you love us. God, all through Scripture, I can't help but just think in, in the whole Old Testament that they just kept saying, God, he's good, and his love endures forever. So God, we know to that today then. Today you're gonna love on us. You just are. It's all you do. And we can't wait to receive that. And I just wanna pray for grace and mercy to help us to receive. To receive your love, to receive your grace, to receive your truth that sets us free. Thanks for loving us. We love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, it was weird. I, this wasn't in my notes, but um, just sitting there worshiping right there with this thought of, man, we have a God who's a father who loves us, right? And Jesus even said that. He goes, man, you guys are, you guys are evil, and you know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more will your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him? So, man, I'm just sitting there worshiping, and some of you may not know, but that was my daughter who was singing right, right over here, and as a dad, my, my heart was just going, just, I love you. And I just thought, and that's what I just realized. I'm like, am I, and I'm evil, apparently. And I know how to love my daughter. And how much more does our Father in heaven, he just loves you. Man, I, I just hope we leave with that today. And, and then when Jesus says he knows how to give us good gifts, I was thinking about you know, as a dad, I love to give good gifts to my, to my kids. And one of the best gifts we ever got our kids was a trampoline. Any other parents want to say amen to the trampoline? Thank you, God. You know what's so funny, though? When you get the trampoline, it's in a box, right? And so you have to pull it out, and you have instructions. And then step by step, you actually put the trampoline together. So there's all these parts. And then every step you take, something else comes together. And then you go to step two and something else comes together. And you keep going through all the steps until finally the trampoline is complete. And once it's complete, the fun begins, right? And there's glory, especially as a parent, because they do it for hours. And all their energy goes out. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, you guys, when our relationship with God begins... As our father, the scriptures tells us, he goes to work. And we are his workmanship. And what, we got, what I want to share with you today is, and he goes step by step, he's actually creating in us this beautiful image. And I want to read you this. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 through 18 says this. Whenever, don't miss this next verse, this next word. Whenever, in fact, all of you say it with me. Whenever. Cool, that's you. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil's taken away. And I can't get into this, isn't, but basically anything, there was nothing that was separating. There's, there's stuff that separates us from God. Sin separates us from him. But Jesus Christ ripped the veil apart so that as soon as any of you, any of you in this room, and I don't know, maybe some of you are here and you've never actually yet been reconciled to God and actually know what it's like to have him in your life. This is good news. If anyone, if you would turn to him today, that veil, that thing between you and God is taken away. Jesus died so you would be forgiven and be reconciled to God. It's beautiful. And then it says, for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Yeah, yeah thank you. And now look at this, so, now let's say these next three words, so, all of us, all of them. every single one of you in this room who have had that veil removed, which is most of you in this place, you would say, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> that means you've been reconciled to God, that veil's not there, and all of us, what happens, who've had that veil removed, we can see and 
reflect the glory of the Lord. We, all of us, guys, this is so important, man. Nobody's escaping today. Isn't that cool? You're all going to hear from him today. Some of you or any of you who would turn, some of you might turn to God today and be reconciled to him. And if you've already turned, all of you are being, you are being transformed into the image of Christ with ever increasing glory. In fact, the, the, I put this in here because it's uh, the Greek actually is from glory to glory, from step to step, more and more. It never ends. You keep being transformed into his glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So we're in this series called What Next? What Next, you guys? Well, you decide. And what's next for you, according to this, is more glory. Does that excite anybody? Yeah. All right, cool. But I'm telling you, this is fascinating that you can actually receive more glory. Now, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I have to talk about football, right? I'm an American for crying out loud. Last night, yes, yes, even a Detroit Lion made it into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Kelvin Johnson made it into the Hall of Fame just last night. Now, Kelvin Johnson being in the Hall. I looked this up. You guys know they actually, the, the, the Hall of Fame has had a traveling, well, before COVID, a traveling display, and it's called this. Gridiron Glory. Gridiron Glory. Quote, the best of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's glory. Kelvin Johnson was glorious, man. Not as glorious as Barry Sanders, but he was glorious. But you know what he had to do? Step by step. He didn't come out of his mom's womb and go, oh, I'm Kelvin Johnson, Hall of Famer. No, he came out of his mom's womb and he crawled and he was messy and, and then he became a toddler and he was a pain in the butt and then he grew up and he was a teenager and he was more of a pain in the butt and then he kept going. But eventually, step by step, Kelvin Johnson became glory. Glory. You guys, all of us who've had the veil removed, you are being transformed into his image with increasing glory. Which means you and I are becoming to look like Jesus and you guys, that's all, that's it. That's what a disciple is. That's all a disciple is. It's someone who follows Jesus. And back then when you were a disciple in that culture, one of my favorite phrases is they would say, may the dust of the rabbi fall on your feet. You know why they said that? Because you were following so closely that when he scuffed his feet, the dirt would fall on yours because you were right there. You were becoming like Jesus. All of you. Every one of you in this room who've had that veil removed, you are being made a disciple to become more like him. And when he, Jesus said, follow me, and what did he say? I will make you a fisher of people. So go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. This is Jesus saying we are being made into his image. He's, and that's what I'm making you. And that's what we want to talk about today. Today, in our final message of this series, what's next, you guys, for all of us who've had the veil removed? Man, we've looked at everything. We've looked at our whole mission statement. Reckless faith, sacrificial love, caring for those who are in need, inviting people into a relationship with God. And today, we're going to conclude with this. What's next for you, follower of Jesus, who's being made into the image of Christ? You got to take a step. You got to take a step. And you get to decide whether you're going to take a step or not. And what I'm going to tell you is you and I can actually take a step today, even today, into glory. That's going to be my phrase for today. I want you to remember, you can take a step into glory. Step by step, glory to glory, becoming more like Jesus. More loving, more patient, more kind, more truthful, more grace-filled, more everything, more joyful, more of Jesus. Now, as I go through some of these steps real quick, 
Here's one, here's one of the things, a key that I want you to realize. You never go through a step alone. You won't do any of these steps by yourself. So when, again, I say this a lot here at K2. People say, well, my face private. No, it's not. Now you have an individual relationship with Jesus, yes. But that relationship is about love. So now it's all about the community. The community. All right? So what's the first step? I'm going to start over here, okay? Because we're going to take a walk here real quick. Well, the first step of faith is to receive. It's the first thing you do. Did you know that you can't walk if you've never been born? Do you all know that? You, you, you can't take any steps. You've got to be born first. That's the first thing that has to happen. Jesus even said this. If you want to enter my kingdom, if you want to be in the way of God, then you actually have to be born of my spirit. And this is part of the good news, you guys is you're trying maybe to be a better person. You're trying to be religious. You're trying to impress God and hopefully he'll let you into heaven. He's like, I'm so not impressed. I love you so much. But here's what I know. You can't follow me. You won't follow me. You're human. You're gonna always wanna do your own thing. But if you receive me, then I will give you my Holy Spirit. And now you have a spiritual power to be able to walk. And so here's the verse, John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 says, to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name. So receive Christ by faith. If you believe in him, you put your trust in him, he gives you the right to become children of God. Children, born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. And that's for all of you, that first verse I said, if anyone turns to the Lord... If you will turn to God, if you'll stop doing your own thing and, 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 and not following him, if you will turn to Jesus Christ and receive his forgiveness, the veil gets taken away and you receive the power of the Holy Spirit and now you can actually start walking. Now here's what's interesting. Remember what I said? You can't do this by yourself. You know why? Look at this. Romans 10 says this. How, can, how, uh, how then can they call on the one they haven't believed in and how can they believe in the one whom they haven't heard? And how can they hear without someone telling them? So all of you guys who are Christians, guess what? This doesn't happen. No one receives Christ unless somebody tells them. See, every step we're going to take, it involves people. All right, so you receive him. That's the first step. And then you know what you do? The next step is you start growing. You start growing. I love this, 1 Peter 2, 2. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So you're saved, but now you start growing up, right? And then now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And then I love this. I've always loved this verse, Colossians 2, 6, and 7. Therefore, as you received Christ, just as you received him, continue to what? Walk. Walk. Now you're taking some steps. Don't you, don't you guys love that phase when, you're, when your little infants took their first steps? Man, that's the greatest moment in all the world. And by the way, if you're at this stage, my guess is you're really messy. Because you were still in diapers, if I remember at one, right? And remember when your new infant took those steps and they just fell down immediately? What did you do as a dad? God, what's wrong with you? Come on, get up and get going. No, man, you were like, woo! They took their first steps. You celebrate this. You guys, once you've received him, you start growing. How do you do it? Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught. Abounding in thanksgiving. All of you who are brand new, if you're new, if you're really young in your faith, and it's not an age thing at all physically, but if you're new in your faith, you need to grow. And you need to do that by being rooted. You put your roots down into him before you start trying to do all this other stuff. And the key to this, you guys, this stage, it's so important that you learn. You need to be taught. You need to get this mind renewed. You need to understand the truth about who God is. So guess what? Are you going to do this by yourself? No way. Those of you who are mature, 
you teach them. You show up on Sundays, you get in life together groups, you start reading your scriptures, you root yourself, okay? So number one, first step, you receive. Second step, you grow. And then the third step is you love. So don't you, don't you love it when your kids start to, eventually they're not infants anymore, and they start to wake up and they're like, oh, there's other people in the world. Because really, at this stage, you're just kind of like, me, me, you know, crave pure spiritual milk. Wah! You're just taking it in. You're just receiving. But eventually, you kind of wake up and go, oh, there's, there's people. And now you're a child. Look at this, Ephesians 2.10. We are God's work. Oops, wrong verse. Ephesians 5. Be imitators of God as dearly beloved children. And do what? Walk in love. Take steps of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. See, this is where, this is why faith isn't private. Because Jesus said, people will actually know if you're my disciples if you love each other. So eventually, for, for, for all of you who are like, I follow Jesus, and maybe you've been in this stage where I'm like, I'm just, just trying to get rooted, I'm trying to sit. but again, you can't do that by yourself. But man, as soon as you start growing, it's like, now you gotta start loving people. So if you just attend, I'm just going to say it, if you just attend church and aren't in relationships with people to be loved and love, you will never keep growing. You can't do it. You can't actually take a step into glory because the glory of Jesus is love, and that's how you know it. So, so take that step. Some of you need to take that step and get into relationships. Stop going to church and start being the church. And then you'll keep growing into glory. And then what do you do? You take step four, and now you start to serve. You're starting to grow up. Ephesians 2.10. Now our kids have chores. Isn't this great? It's getting good. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. See, these are, you take step by step, glory by glory, and now all of a sudden, you know, his disciples had walked with him for three years and they still, he still had to teach them, hey guys, listen, the greatest in my kingdom is who? It's the one who serves. The greatest in the kingdom. So if you're actually growing into the image of Jesus, becoming, looking more like him, you know what you're doing? You're actually starting to serve. Because he says the greatest in the kingdom is the one who serves. He goes, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. I'm among you as one who serves. And if Jesus is living inside of me, he's finally setting me free from myself. And I'm using the gifts that he's given me for the benefit of the body. And again, that's why your faith is in private. Because he gave you a spiritual gift so that you would bless everybody else in this room. And then he says this crazy thing. You want to talk about glory? He says, we... You actually, by yourself, don't reach the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We do, because we're a body. And so when every part is doing its work, when you've grown up and you've taken the step where you're like, okay, I don't just receive. And I just want to say, can I just be pretty bold here? For some of you, you've been a Christian for a really long time, and you're still, you're still like, I need more. And I need deeper. I need more. I need more. Well, I'm going to tell you, the more you need is this. Love. And the more you need is God gave you stuff so you'd be a stream of living water pouring out to each other. So jump in, man, jump in. Because then you become free and it's beautiful and it's glorious. Now, here's what's crazy. So many of you in this church have done those four things. You've received Christ. You've actually grown in your knowledge and understanding. You've got into relationship. You're loving people. And you are serving. So many of you are being beautiful. You're using your gifts. And you're being like Jesus. You've step by step into glory. You've been transformed into the image of Christ. But I want to conclude today with the most important step that I want to let you know about today. And the fifth step, over here, when we finally get to maturity, is multiply. We start to multiply. Do you remember what Jesus said when we started this series? He said, no one who's left everything to follow me will fail to receive a hundred times as much. You guys remember that? A hundred times as much! 
come on, man, that's some multiplication. Now, why would that happen? Why does that happen if you follow him? Because Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Step by step, glory to glory, he's making you someone who is free from yourself and you've gone through so much growth and there's so much beauty, you now have what it takes to bring somebody else along the journey. The Bible says you're complete. He, Paul says, I am doing everything I can to help every follower of Jesus become mature and complete. You are now a trampoline. And the little kids can jump on you and have glory and joy because you're made complete. Jesus says, I make disciples who make disciples. And if you're going to take a step into glory, and this is, this is for many of you in this room who have been a Christian, you've done this stuff and you're ready, but the next step is if you're going to look like Jesus, if you're really going to look like Jesus, be transformed in his image, then you are going to make disciples because that's what Jesus did. That's the step into glory. Last week I shared this verse, 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 through 20. Look what it says. For what is our hope and our joy or the crown in which we will glory? Oh, I'm in the Hall of Fame. In the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes, is it not you? Indeed, you are our, say it, glory. See, when you're being transformed in the image of Jesus, it's not about you anymore. Your glory is all the people that you've actually poured into who are now becoming to know Jesus. And so the steps, you know, you become the one that actually is sharing your faith. You're the one whose feet are beautiful because you are the one that actually helped someone hear the gospel so that they could believe. Oh man, come on. You want to get excited as a follower of Jesus? Do that. You're the one who walks with somebody and helps them grow and understand the truth and read the Bible together. You're the one who brings them into a community now of love and you love them and you love them and they're learning how to love you back. They're experiencing it with you. You're the one who sees who God made them to be and you're cre- you're saying, I see the glory in you. I see the gift in you and you pull it out and you help them to realize who they were made to be and then that person is like, They're growing. They're becoming like Jesus. And you walked with them every step of the way. And then that person goes, all right, now I'm going to do it. And then they go back. And now they start sharing their faith with somebody and helping them to grow and loving them and seeing their gifts. You guys, that's multiplication. It's me taking Mark Demiglio right here. And Mark and I, Mark, let me just pour. Let me walk this with you. And then after we do that for a year, Mark and I go out. And now we do it with two more people. And Mark takes Kyle and I take Robert. And now instead of two people, there's four. And then the next year, instead of four, there's eight. And then instead of eight, there's 16. You guys, you know how crazy this is? If every one of us who followed Jesus actually made disciples who make disciples and we multiplied ourselves out, okay, this is crazy. We're 16 years old as a church, 16 years old. If I had started 16 years ago with that, with one person, and the next year had done it, we had done it to four. 16 years later, you know how many people will be following Jesus? 65,536. Come on, man. That's all you got? 65,000 people? You know what's so funny? All of us want to see people come to Christ. All of us want to see the church grow. We want to see the kingdom advance. And God's like, okay, let me come down to earth and let me show you how to do this. You hang out with people. You hang out with people. You do life with them. You teach them everything that you know so they can start to understand God. You, you love them and you create an amazing community of love. They start discovering who I made them to be. And then... They go through and it happens over and over again. God showed us how to change the world. And all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. All of us can. We are being transformed into the image of Jesus. And one of the things we've missed 
as the church is the image of Jesus as someone who makes disciples. Now I'm going to ask you today to take a step, another step into glory when we're done. Some of you, I'm praying that you'll do that. Can I just share, just real quick, not too long ago, I went to this conference called Exponential, and I, I'll be honest with you, I was being very honest with God and some of our leadership. My vision was getting foggy. It was just foggy. And I'm just telling you, it's hard to be a lead pastor when you're, if you, <laughs> you're supposed to be casting vision, you're like, oh, I, don't, I can't see. And I'm like, God, either you got to do something for me or put somebody else in this position. I don't need to be the lead pastor here, but I need vision. And I went to this conference, and they had a breakout session before it started on multiplication. And the guy speaking was Larry, this is kind of funny, I didn't realize this until this morning, Larry Walkemeyer was his name. <laughs> and he said, God at one point told him, Larry, your church is like a lake. It's just a body of people to get together. He goes, I don't want you to be a lake. I said I would make you streams of living water. Streams of living water. And you know what's so funny? So Larry changed his whole church, and I was listening to him, and I'm going, Dad, come I know this. I teach people this. I bet some of you sitting here today, you know you're supposed to make disciples. You've, you've heard Jesus say a hundred times, go make disciples. Okay, I got it, Lord. I, I memorized that. Go make disciples. Um, but you were like me. As a pastor, I know that was true, and we weren't doing it. And I sat there, and in that moment, something different happened to me. Instead of knowing it intellectually, Jesus spoke to me. And there's something really different that happens than when you know something here, and then when Jesus speaks to you here. We had a break, I called Susie at the break, and I said, okay, I can come home. I don't even need to go to the rest of the conference. We need to be a church that makes disciples. And here's what I know. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me step by step, glory to glory. They become more like him. So I came back, and I shared this with Jason Dunn, right, our executive guy, and, he's, and he started catching the vision, and I'll never forget one time he goes, what in the world, what's the church been doing? He goes, I've been in church 31 years. He goes, no one has ever discipled me or equipped me to be able to do it. He goes, what? And I'm like, you know, and can I be honest with you? No one ever discipled me ever, ever either. I never had anybody say, Dave, I'd like to walk with you and help you grow. I just went to church like you guys and I learned and I read my Bible and I got in groups and I, I did everything I could, but man, I never had it either. And now I just need to, I am apologizing to you again like I did last week. Please have lots of grace and your mercy for me. This one, Paul Wilson's here, a friend of mine, and he said that he always hands out people when they join his church a, 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 doc, a, a, a document with a gold seal that says, I, there's only one thing 100% sure I guarantee you. He goes, that I will, that I will fail you. <laughs> and those of you guys who've been with me for a long time, that's what I've told you too. I have failed you. Because we have served and we have taught and we have gotten life together groups and we have helped you to find... We have not equipped you to make disciples. And I'm so sorry. Because that's what Jesus said he would actually make us. So, man, I just want to tell you, God's done some great stuff. But I'm telling you, I, I don't, I don't want to just add. I want 100 times. Anybody else in here want 100 times? I, want, I mean, if, if, if I can have 100 times return because I give up my life to follow Jesus, bring it, baby. All right? So what we've been doing is I've been reading, we've been studying, I've been doing online courses, we're learning from those around the world who are actually making disciples, and what we've learned is this. It has to be relational. It's not a class. It's not just sitting here in church. You have to be flesh on flesh like Jesus was. We gotta do it like Jesus. And this means you gotta get in a relationship. It's gotta be relationship, it's gotta be simple, and it's got to be transferable. And by the way, simple is not easy. Discipleship is super hard. Ask Jesus. A dude betrayed him and sent him to the cross. Discipleship is simple, but it's not easy. And then it has to be transferable. And what excites me, you guys, is there are people 
in your sphere of influence that God's working in because he's always working in and he wants to bring them into his kingdom and you're the one who's going to tell them the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're going to hear and they're going to believe. There are people like that. There are people right here in our midst. You're young, you're young, you're young. You need to be taught. Some of you need to be in community so you can learn how to love and how to be loved. And some of you are, 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 are needing to find out what your gifts are and be a part of the church. And, and, and some of you are the ones who are going to walk with people and help them do that. And what's most exciting to me is some of you, you've been a follower of Jesus for a long time, and can we just be honest, you're, you're bored, you're going through the motions, you have no fire in your belly, and you haven't taken a step of faith in a really long time. And I'm just going to tell you, it's impossible to not keep your fresh faith if you're a stream of living water that's pouring into another person. And I'm, I think I might be most excited about that! Because we love you, man. God loves you, right? He loves us. <laughs> and one of the ways he loves you is he wants you to become mature and complete. He doesn't want you to be a half-baked box that still has stuff to be put together. He wants to make you try and believe and make joy and life happen on you and in you and because of you, because he's inside you. So, man, if that's you today, I'm, I don't know, maybe you're going to be like me sitting in that conference going, well, I know I'm supposed to make disciples. And then Jesus goes, bam, that means you, Nelson. That means you, Nelson. Come, follow me, David Michael Nelson, and I will make you a fisher of people. Two, four, eight, sixteen, sixty-five thousand. Bring it. So, we're starting a class. I shouldn't have said that word because I hate classes. We're not doing that. It's relational. But we are going to do a training, and it's called Equipped to a disciple. And I want to ask every one of you who are in this room, who are hearing the shepherd say to you, listen, I've grown you up, but the next step is for you to pour your life into another person. You're ready. You can do this. Derek and Jason and I are going to be leading three different groups to help you be equipped to actually disciple. We've been practicing this ourselves. We've taken our staff through it. And now we're ready to take the next step and take any of you who are ready to take this step. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to text that right there. You're going to text EQUIPPED to 94090. Don't miss that number. Text EQUIPPED to 94090. And what will happen is you will fill out a, 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 a spiritual background form just so we can get to know you. And we're going to give people a whole week to do this, all week long. And then after this week, we will contact you. And then we're going to work together with you to figure out what the right timing is to meet. So, Because this is about relationship, okay? And then we will pour into you. And we will spend about six weeks taking you through these simple practices that we've been learning. And then we'll continue to walk with you as we coach you. So that you can be transformed into the image of Jesus. And become mature and complete by pouring your life into another human being. All right? So uh, we're going to close with a perfect song. And here's what I want to ask you to do. All of you online, all of you sitting in this room today, I'm going to ask you today, right now, because when I, I seriously, I went from that conference room and called Susie and go, I can come home right now because I know I'm not going to be the same. See, when Jesus speaks to you and you follow him, you are not the same. And I'm, I'm just, you know, it's so cool. I was praying about this this morning and, and I just felt like Jesus said, so Dave, just chill. You don't even have to try to get anybody to do this. I'll speak to the ones. I'll speak to my kids. I'll speak to my sheep. And they'll hear my voice. And sheep, remember, follow him. So if you're hearing his voice today, right now, Pull out your phone, or while the song, while we're worshiping, if you want us to be equipped, if you want to sign up for this and be equipped to make a disciple, then you text equipped to 94090. And you make that step of faith. And you go from glory to glory. And you look like Jesus. So as we do, you guys, you could, this, this song, man, you could, you, it's your decision, right? That's the whole series. What's next? You decide. 
And you could decide, no, I'm gonna sit here. And I'm gonna stay right where I'm at. I'm gonna play it safe. Or you could say, no, I'm gonna take a step. And I'm gonna follow Jesus. Because if you follow him, it means taking steps so you can be transformed into his glory. And wherever you are today, for some of you, maybe you just want, you're like, wow, I just, I just want to experience God. And you need to be one of those who turns to him and receives him today. Some of you just need to get connected today. All I know is this, there's a step because all of us, remember, all of you who've had the veil removed are being transformed into his image. So take this moment seriously. Don't just sing this song. Worship him. Worship him, okay? And let's do it together. Let's stand and let's sing. And you text that number if you're ready to take that step.